Okay, let's go. Ah, okay. Hello, everyone. <laughs> hey, friends. <laughs> 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 Welcome to True Pearls in a Pod. This is Sarah. I'm Sarah. I'm Paige. Um, and we're so glad to have you guys back and watching our next episode of our podcast. Yeah, um, it's a gloomy day in Melbourne, um, but that's perfect for knitting vibes, I think. Um, we're meeting on the lands with the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation, and we're really grateful and we're really happy to be here. Um, we've got lots to talk about today. I'm actually <laughs> so, yeah, I'm super hyped. I'm getting that feeling again where, you know, I'm bursting with excitement and energy despite it being seven something in the morning. I think when I got here, I was a bit like still warming up but now i've got tea i've got a mince pie because it's mince pies for breakfast season for me mm -hmm. so um i'm excited i oh god sorry golly were you gonna say something oh i was just gonna say because you know it is gloomy i mean outside it's like i'd say it's like about 15 degrees or something like mm -hmm. it's not too terrible no, no, no. but you know what's so funny i feel like back in the day i used to always be a summer chick like i wanted to go to the beach i wanted yeah, to be yeah. hot now, I kid you not, when it starts drizzling and raining, the dream. Really happy. <laughs> I love grizzly weather so much now because I can knit without my hands feeling clammy and it's just it's a vibe. I've yeah. become an old soul. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome to the club. Um, we've got some finished objects to talk about. We've got some whips and some acquisitions and we've got a giveaway to talk about, um, which we alluded to in our last podcast. <laughs> But yes, I mean, we say alluded to, I feel like we told we, them straight up what it was, yeah. but we're going to do it more formally in this video. So, um, yeah, stay tuned for that one. Let's start with, what are you wearing? <laughs> I am wearing my silly slipover by Petite Knit. Um, full disclosure, we blocked this with a steamer <laughs> just before uh, Sarah got here. Um, and the weaves, the ends aren't completely woven in but it is so cute it's like the perfect length i'm sorry it's so i i love it actually oh it's not like mm, mm, mm. yeah i i really love it um the fit's like the dream it's perfect um it's exactly my style i also love it with like denim yeah like, this combo really is denim. i'm very into it um i i mean we'll talk about it when we talk about our acquisitions but i have ordered some like elastic stuff to put into oh for the neckband yeah the neckband and i'll probably put in the armholes as well true, true. um but like i normally just use like corded elastic like braided elastic or okay. like the one that has fabric around it oh like for um, sharing yeah i yeah. usually use that like kind of elastic thread for that purpose do you do that on your knitwear i do it and i think that it does help keep the shape yeah, a bit I mean, nicer I probably should. but i've like tried before on amazon to buy like just clear elastic yeah, thread because yeah. it's really annoying i keep buying it for like every different color piece of knitwear and it's oh, unnecessary right, right, right. right um but it's really hard to find and even on amazon yeah anyway um we made like an order off garntopia the other day and they had the petite knit version oh cool, and cool. i thought it was going to be like expensive ish it was three dollars so yeah i'm really excited sorry. to try it anyway we'll talk about that later but yeah that's what i'm wearing love it um and this what did you use oh i used the alpine yarn from bendigo woolen mills which is very similar to woodlands but it's got a slightly different uh combination i think it's got a bit more alpaca and stuff in it um but it's just like tweedy aussie yarn you were a bit off this i think when you were yeah, it, look, but i'm very into it i think it's perfect look the look is great yeah it's just and like oh, maybe Feel if you it, feel you like if you can kind of see what yeah, I mean, yeah, actually, it feels a little bit super washy. I think that's I don't know, I understand that. I had some like, similar qualms. I can, recently. I can feel like it feel like I think it's because I'm so used to other like yeah, more natural beautiful. feeling, yeah. yeah, that I can like feel a little bit of super washiness to it but in saying that what you get out of that is that it's going to wear so amazingly mm -hmm. um and particularly given it has like alpaca and stuff in it like it'll pull less and yeah. it'll wear nicely and as i said before in previous episodes um bendigo woolen mills yarn like it's the kind of yarn that people in Aus in australia like have said they'll knit something and then they'll hand it down like several generations it and it looks brand new yeah um, it really really lasts so that's just a trade-off, I think, that you have to accept. Um, I was speaking, I saw that someone from, I think, Canada had ordered. ordered ah, I loved it. She, so she ordered like $200 worth of 
bent yeah. gobel and mill yarn um and she was like i'm so happy for her like i'm just imagining her getting these enormous 200 gram they're balls. huge balls in yarn so like it's it's hype worth yeah know? yeah so um <laughs> I mean, like, you're welcome did, you, did, you, did I, I don't know if i ever showed them on camera do you remember when we ordered like 20 <laughs> plus balls of yarn from them and it came in like a, a box it wasn't even a box. It was like a like a Santa sack, and it was like this tall. It was as tall as me off the ground. It was huge because it's so much. Mine was a big bag too. It was dropped at my front door, and I was like, oh god. Yeah. Anyway, the post office down down well, downstairs. Yeah, the post office downstairs. They think that I'm mad because I'm there like every day picking up more parcels. yarn. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's like you've got more squishy parcels. Yeah, they don't know it's yarn though. So every time they're just like, "Oh, is it like Christmas shopping?" I'm like, "No, just for me. Just me. <laughs> just me. Love it." Um, cool. What are you wearing? I'm wearing my front porch don't pullover. Know. Um, this is a test knit I'm doing for Andrea Gorn. Um, and this is a. It's just quite a simple classic drop shoulder kind of boxy fit uh, pullover. Um, I was speaking a little bit about it as I was knitting it last time, but I'm really like her patterns because she's really considerate about sizing. And so this one has like a high bust measurement as well as like a full bust. The sleeves as, uh, so for the- This is your dream sleeve. I could just hear it in your thigh. The sleeves are perfect because she has three different lengths of sleeves which I really like because as a long armed person, the instructions are normally like decrease at this set rate and then kind of knit straight until you're happy with the length, which means you get a really uneven decrease, right? Mm. With this one, she's specified three different sleeve lengths. And so you have a lot more kind of finesse as to creating a really nice, like- You can tell she's a seamstress. Like, you know, it's just like, rather than being like shaping to here and then straight, it's shaping all the way. So you get a more natural thing. And I mean, it's really subtle, like in the scheme of my life, it's not a big deal, but have, it's just a nice touch. Oh, well, I have to say like looking at it and how it fits, you're so charming. I can see so it in your soul. But um, yeah. As I look, like, look at it, the shape of it is, like the fit of it is really, really, really nice. nice. Like it's well thought out, you yeah. can tell. Um, I don't know why. But recently I've become really obsessed with shoulder details. It's so niche. I don't know you why. You kept sending me photos. And it's oh, like... shoulders. <laughs> okay. My whole Instagram like message chain to Sarah at the moment is, oh my gosh, look, look at, at this shoulder, shoulder detail. detail. Like, oh, have you heard of, what was the recent one? The, was it Coco Knits? The Coco Knits method? I don't know. Maybe. There was yeah. like all these yeah. like different shoulder. Anyway, I like the shoulder detail. Thank you. So thank niche. you. Um, I've made this in a 100% alpaca yarn. Um, which has just made the drape on the this like it's just oh, so I love it. I have uh, things to say about that. Interestingly, so you know how like alpaca yarn gets a bit of a not a bad rap, but you know the softer the yarn, the more it pills. My Klein sweater hardly pills, and like my Klein sweater is made out of the same Maya yeah. 100% alpaca. The stitch definition is slightly less because like all the fibers mesh, but I really love that yeah. about it. And like, 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 yeah, like I don't like it actually wears very well. I, that was the first knitted piece that I made. Oh yeah, that's right. And so I've worn it to death. Like it, it's by by its nature my most worn. And yeah. So. Um, but yes, um, the only things that I changed on this was I've done rather than a one by one twisted rib on the for all of the bands I've done a two by two because that's trendy and I thought it kind of matched the flexible like the relaxed uh nature of the garment I, I had messaged her and I was like can I do two by two rib and she was like yeah of course I think it suits it for like your style particularly better and I think that boat neck like really suits the two by two yeah so very yes, nice. I think this pattern is going to come out sometime in January. Um, so keep an eye out for it. It's a classic and um, it's going to be a, a staple in my, it already is a staple in my wardrobe. And I love it. So yeah. Um, do you have any more finished objects? Yeah. Oh, okay. Then we should go to those because I was going to say I have a bit of a segue for that. Mm -mm -mm -mm. But we'll talk about it later. Okay, other finished object. Yes, God, I've got a lot of stuff on here today. Oh, sorry. Mm. Okay. Let's chill. You know these ones. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, but these feet are very small. These are for my mum. This is an adult? Yeah. I think that they'll stretch. 
no, no, no. I'm not saying that it won't fit your mum. I just forget how big my feet are for yeah. my Proportional proportionally. Your... Yeah. So, um, my so second cute. finish object is two pairs of slipper socks. They're so cute. <laughs> for my parents for Christmas. <laughs> That's the cutest thing in the world. They um, feel so sturdy. Yeah. So these are the um, Dobler Toffler slipper socks from Sandaskan. It's a free pattern in, but it's only Norwegian. Um, I am obsessed with this pattern. I talk about it every episode. I'm really sorry to everyone, um, but I won't stop because I love them. They're really um, cute. They're made in Fritidskarn. <laughs> and um, they're just fantastic. Um, so I knit both. They knit up so quick as well. Like I went to go and visit a friend um, and I had a long train ride and I smashed them out, but they're cozy and soft and I love them. I still need to order my yarn for this. Oh yeah, I think I've changed my mind. I want to get more. Okay, cool. Well, we've actually got a like little, like a little list of friends who, who live wanting, locally who all want to buy this socks. yarn. So they've yeah, they're just like got good fluff, but they're really sturdy and they look just um, beautifully felted. <laughs> I'll just cover our faces, oh. but um, but yeah, they look they look beautifully felted, like. Anyway. Look a little bit wonky. I feel like these ones look nicer. Okay, well, I I should have turned it this way. Yeah. Anyway, um, so yes, love this pattern. Here's two more for my collection. Um, so yes, I'm still loving seeing everyone who's still making them for Christmas. Like people have been tagging me, which I really really love. So thanks. I really think this color is cute, by the way. Yeah, it's called like old pink when I translated it from Norwegian, which was a bit unfair, I think, because it's quite a nice pink. Uh, maybe just um like antique pink. It's kind of like, yeah, like anti lost gold. In, land, lost in translation, that one. Um, I think it's like, I'm not going to lie to you. I mean, I'm never going to hate your yarn choices. But when I saw the yarn initially for this, I was a bit like, ooh, ooh. like the colour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But felt it up gorgeous. I think my mum will like that colour. Dusty, dusty pink vibes. So yes, that is my other finished object. And that is the end of my gift knitting. Everything's done. Oh, so proud of you. Feeling good. Jacob's still doing little side eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Is it for me? <laughs> no. Um, what's next? Where would you like to go next? I don't have any finished objects. I mean, in, I can don't have to... any finished objects, she says. Oh, I mean, it was kind of finished last Whatever. Ep. Um, do you still have finished objects no, or should I it. talk about some whips? Let's talk about some whips. Okay, so um, the first whip I haven't even brought downstairs because you've seen it in every single episode. It's my um, zipper sweater, the chunkier version, which is just not the light version, um, in my Noro yarn. And it's like that rainbowy one. It's beautiful. I've made great progress on it. Like I finished throat sleeves now. Oh. I'm just on the body, which is good. It's just a slow burn. It's a... It's a <laughs> I know I'm knitting it slowly, but it is genuinely a quick knit because it's You're just chunky. like savoring it. I am savoring it. And also I'm right, guys, I'm right in the thick of the study right now. Like I should not be really knitting at all. Um, things are going to be getting a little bit more real for the next two months. So it's been an intermittent knitting project. But in terms of other whips, I did see all your lovely comments about what colorway I should use for the spot sweater by yeah. Anne Vensel. <laughs> um, so I'll show you what we decided on. So this is actually going to be a surprise to Sarah. Too. I'm actually so excited. Okay, <laughs> no, because like we talked, no, it's not what we've talked about. What? Yeah, I know, I changed my mind again. Okay, that's why I'm like, it's going to be a surprise to you too. So this was the yarn in question. I'll just focus on it so you can see so this was the yarn that we were wanting to use it's um some hedgehog fibers yarn in birthday cake and this is it all caked they're, up they're skinny singles or whatever yes yeah, yeah. skinny singles which is actually like quite it's not as easy to find as other hedgehog fibers yarn annoyingly yep. but anyway the colors are beautiful um and i bought this like second hand not really second hand i bought it like from a someone who was de-stashing some yarn online um in australia Anyway, so the question was for the spot sweater, what do I pair it with? And I gave a bunch of options and I swear 90% of people said navy. Navy, yeah. This is the thing. I am a pastel girly, right? I'm a pastel I think that's, girly. I think I held up because like, that's what I liked. And I was like, this one's well, great. I think objectively on other people, that is the perfect yarn choice because sure. it gives a good amount of contrast. You know, yeah. it's the greatest choice. 
However, I'm a pastel girly, so I thought I would. So you ignored the people. I ignored the people. Oh, also, I decided with Sarah. I looked into my stash of what I had in terms of mohair, and this was the mohair that I decided to go with, which is um, Kremke, Kremke's Soul Wool. Silky, Silky kid. kid. Um, and this was in the color Tusty Pink. This is the exact same. This is just leftover from what I used for when I made my fortune sweater. But I think it brings a little bit more pink out of mm. this, which is what I, I really like. Yeah. yeah. And then like, we'll explain this in a sec, but you can see how it like kind of combines. It's really hard to like focus without. Sorry. Yeah, anyway, you can see how it, Whatever. hopefully sorry. <laughs> you can see how it combines. And then I was going to combine it with this. So, this is Rowan, and I think the color's called the color's called Pearl. For this, this is Rowan's Kid Silk Haze, and then this is Ochre. Um, I can check what the color's called, but to be honest, it's probably not going to be too helpful because she doesn't run it anymore. She does new colors every season, and this sold out pretty quickly, so I <laughs> bought heaps of them. <laughs> um, anyway, so I thought this was a gorgeous combo. Oh, they look so nice um, together. And then I was going to do it with this. Right. And then also the other plot twist, guys, is I know I said I was going to do the Anne Bensel pattern. And since then, I haven't fallen in love with gingham. And then I thought that I wanted gingham with this. And I thought that's going to be so much cooler. Um, anyway, so I found a different pattern for it. And it's called, oh, I can't remember what it's called. The Great Gingham. Great gingham. It's the one that you showed me. Jessie May. Is yeah. Jessie May. I think it's called the Great Gingham Raglan. It is a raglan. It honestly, if you put gingham into Ravelry, there are only like four that came up, and it's the Jesse May yeah. one. And it's yeah, it's a raglan yeah. style. It's got like lots of people have knitted it, and it's it's very cute looking. Anyway, so yeah. this was a plan. I did a swatch and everything. I sent Sarah the swatch. I was like, look how gorgeous this is. It feels so <laughs> luxurious to knit because this is like it's just the softest thing. Actually, so I this have... is like wool, silk, and yak, and this is wool, yeah. silk, and mohair, and yeah. Like, it's luxe. Like, feel like how, like, yeah. Anyway, so let me explain. This, we started casting on, also, okay, it's, okay. The pattern, I understand it's because it's gingham. And uh, so, like, by that nature, doing that color work, like, top down with the raglan and short rows, it's a little bit complicated. Mm -hmm. So I think to get around that, the fit's going to be a little bit different, but it's also worked bottom up. The reason that I frown at that is I hate having to cast on like 200 stitches, <laughs> 220 to be precise, mm. messing it up like 3 billion sure. times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, so I started it, started doing this, right? Looks great. It's soft. Feeling great. Feeling, feeling good. great. And She's then, on her way. And then I just had this vision, I, like the people's voice, I just heard it. Do navy, the do, do the, the navy, do the navy. And I think at the time, because I was thinking spot sweater, I was like, this is the go. Then I was thinking gingham, I was like, this is the go. And then I like was looking at other people who had made it online and decided, oh, but like maybe it would look better with more contrast. You guys should have listened to you all along. It does look better with more contrast. But the, the, the swatch that you sent me with the brown looked so good. It does look good, but now imagine that with navy. Okay. Yeah. yeah the contrast, actually, yeah, the yeah. contrast with the navy just looks dope okay. and I think it really will bring out the beauty in this yarn more so, I'm so, I'm so can you hurry up <laughs> <laughs> so good thing your gal has a problem when it comes to buying yarn and stashing it <laughs> Kelly just had in the stash the perfect oh, that's yarn it's oh the perfect God. yarn because <laughs> That ochre is like, it's a plied yarn. This yarn is, I just have navy sweet pea lying about in navy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, sweet pea by, wait, back, uh, black bottle fibers. Black bottle fibers. Yeah. Um, oh, stunning. And it's like that same skinny single, like non plied single ply situation. Um, and then I also had matching mohair. Uh, this is Izia, their silk mohair. Um, and yeah, and just let's just talk about how much better this is going to be in gingham. Oh, it's going to be so good. <laughs> Everyone knows this is the better, the better deal. So um, have you done a swatch? I haven't done a swatch because I'm just committing. You're just committing. I've just okay. decided. I thought I might be able to. I thought I'd see a swatch. No, no, no. I mean, you'll just have to wait and see. I haven't gotten up to the color work yet I because. Think, sorry, sorry. I think this is the right thing. This I think so right too. Choice. I mean, it looks beautiful. Now, guys. 
So this is where we're up to. Remember the last video, Sarah was like, oh, it's a whip, not even worth talking about. It's barely a whip. Uh, that's, <laughs> that's what this is. But, you know, we're in study no, season, the, so this yeah. is as good as this it gets. Um, because devastatingly, I actually had, like, pretty much finished it. And then I realized that when I've, like, put it down and pulled it back up, I've twisted <gasps> it around that's my here. Oh, but, God. like, normally, like, I remember picking it up and checking, but I must have checked wrong, and it must have been late at night. And yeah, I just... knitted over the twist, if you know what yeah. I mean. So then I was like, why is it twisted? Why is it twisted? And I could see where I knitted over it. I went and back, and I tried to, like, drop the stitches and untwist. It's just impossible once you've knitted once over it. it. Oh. Like, because you I mean, have, like, the... And you have like the legs like in between, so I had to like untwist in the leg. It was just, and I just couldn't do it, so I started again. And then yeah, I got the I stitch numbers right wrong answer. a million times, and I was getting frustrated. Anyway, we're back to square one, but it's looking good. Um, it starts off as like a twisted. Oh, sorry, it starts off as a. How do I? I just want to, you know. Okay, I think we bail on trying to. Yeah, it's too much. Oh. Okay. Ooh, it's, I don't move. It starts as, off as a twisted rib. Um, and with the single Beautiful. ply, it's so pretty. Like, Beautiful. Look, look how cute it is. Oh, it's, I think it's the perfect combo. I also, at the beginning, because I tried doing non-twisted rib initially, actually on the oat color. Oh, yeah. It's I, fine. I tried this new thing. I mean, it's not a new thing for anyone but me. I tried doing combination knitting. Have you done that before or heard of that? No. It's interesting. It's like when you do ribbing, you know how a lot of people like they'll, because just by nature, their pearl stitches might be messier than the knit stitches or the opposite. Yeah. Um, it happens when you're, I'm a English style knitter yeah. because you're like doing throws, like there's more of a gap between uh, them or something. Okay. So combination knitting is you, you knit through the back loop, but you don't twist them. Like it's the way that you do the pearl stitches kind of backwards. You'll have, it's kind of hard to explain verbally, but if you look on YouTube, you'll see what I mean, but it's a different technique to do on your pearl stitches to essentially make it neater. Cool. And I did do it for a bit, but now I'm doing twisted rib anyway, so it doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I guess like, you know, if you're Good thinking of wanting to try, like I think I'm going to try it again next time I do something in rib. One by one rib. Yeah, yeah cool. it's a good option. Um, it does make a difference. Like if you look at the course Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, just subtle things. But anyways, I'm very, I'm really, really excited about that. I'm excited yeah. too. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, I have a whip, which is um, another one, another pattern by Andrew Gorn. <gasps> My heart. Oh. Um, I just cast off. Wait, paper. what's this made? Is this lime flower? No. It looks exactly like lime flower. What Sorry. is this? If I just let you, oh no, no, no. <laughs> if I just let you speak for like 10 <laughs> seconds, I would find out. So this is the Helianthus Tank. I think that's how you say it, by Andrea Gorn. Um, I'm <laughs> just a big fan of her Sorry, work. I just saw the provisional cast on and forgot how much you <laughs> love a provisional <laughs> cast. Um, so this is like my kind of nod to summer knitting, which I'm not much of a summer knitter, but I was like, I'll do a summer pattern. Um, so it is like just a, um, quite a sort of a basic boxy tank. Um, I am using the twisted rib looks neat. Thank you. I'm using, um, some yarn by the great ocean road woolen mill. It's called summer fiesta, which is 70% merino, 30% linen. And this is a four ply. It's quite an unusual yarn. It's a bit weird. Um, but I'm enjoying it. You know what though? It blocks awesome. I haven't blocked it yet. No, I know, but oh, it, it blocks really beautifully. Cause, um, like, so shout out to Great Ocean Road Woolen Mill. They're like often at the sort of yarn market oh, kind of and things that we go to. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. Their yarn is so beautiful there and they're really personal about their brand. So yeah, anyway, they've had a lot of samples out in Summer Fiesta and it's Actually, always that really nice. beautiful. Yeah. So um, it's quite a fine four ply. Um, but the yardage on it, if it's I really remember good. correctly, is insane. Like they were showing us tops and like yeah. the whole top was like one skein. This is 460 meters. Yeah, it's um, really 100 good. Grams. It's um, really good yardage. So uh, the pattern is normally for like a four five ply, but this one is kind of maybe a three four ply. It's a thin, it's a thin fingering. So what I did was I did a gauge swatch. Aren't you proud? Proud of you. And um, I kind of adjusted the size that I was doing to accommodate for the fact that my 
um, gauge was smaller. Um, so I've had to do a little bit of like gauge maths. Hopefully it works out. Um, this is a bottom up construction. Um, so it gets you to kind of cast on with the ribbing. I don't like that because I only want to use the one ball. Like I've only bought one skein and I want to yeah. use it up. So I've done what I always do with top, with bottom up things, which is I did a provisional cast on. That's such a good idea. I wish I could do that with mine, but I think Why with not? the color work, it's going to be too complicated. I don't, I don't want to do it I'm, too hard. It's maybe. too hard, too um, hard for me. Anyway, so I do a provisional cast on and then I did a few rounds just to like get a bit of established mm. um, before I started shaping for the arms. So at the moment it's rather cropped, obviously. Stunning. <laughs> but once I do, I've done the neck band, and once I do the arm bands, whatever's left, I'm just gonna nick down. That's such a good idea. Oh, maybe I could have, I'm not doing that cast one again. Yeah. Like, I refuse. <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, it's a really lovely pattern. Um, I love the color too. Yeah, it's, it's quite You're not sold. I heard it in your voice. I love it. It reminds yeah. me so much of, the Mary Wallen lime um, flower, flower, as I said before, that it's just a bit lumpy in some places. Like the yarn is irregular, but not regularly irregular. I think, if that makes sense. But I think, as I said, once you block it, yeah. it looks really cool. Is it? It is a more rustic yarn. Like it's made. Like the guy who makes it, Nick. Oh, that's bad. If I, it's not just Nick, is it? And his partner. But it's bad that I don't know her name. Never mind. Anyway, it's essentially like. They like he literally like they're literally his livestock, and he also spent like at Sian Spun at his place. Like yeah. it's all like a completely just the two of them run this brand as a little one man yeah. show, two man show, yeah, two Real woman cute. man show. The band is using a one by one twisted rib, um, and I feel like last time I was agonizing over doing a. Um, sewn bind off in twisted rib because I initially did it for this and it didn't look very good and I tried to do like twist do it with a twist but it was just like too tight because this was really tight so I just ignored uh, it and it looks fine I think it looks okay no, so it looks fine someone in the comments of the last one was like don't worry it'll block out and I was like great that's all I need to know that's what we want to hear it'll block out it's interesting that you say that because when I was casting on in twisted rib, I was thinking the same thing. I thought, do I need to do my setup rows in twisted? But I didn't, and it looks fine. great. So, so yep, this is my current whip. It is on small needles, so it's taking a while. But yeah, but you know what? <laughs> probably to the detriment of our podcast. I'm all about just enjoying the process. Oh, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. like, do a little gay swatch. You know how, like, there's this whole thing of, you know, uh, like, unpopular opinion, you know, I love a gay swatch. I actually do love a gay swatch because you get a little snapshot into what your finished object's going to look like. She hates it. I you wish I could say, like, this is my gay swatch. See, so, <laughs> you know, the gay swatch, I sent Sarah a picture of my gay swatch for the other one. Yeah. Do you know how big that was? It was this long. <laughs> You might as well. That's hard to I know. That's why I was like, oh. Also, I like use the yarn from my gauge swatch in the project. Oh, like, yeah, I undo yeah. it. Um, um, this is this is my this is me being like, look, I'm so proud of myself. I feel like most, this is like a normal. Swatch. Like a lot of people do it like this, like tiny little. Yeah. Anyway, I think that's probably as small as you could get away with and justify calling it gauge swatch. But I did a gauge swatch, so I think it's cute. I mean, I, I gauge swatch if I test, like yeah. the test knits. I will like for this. I did. Um, but yeah. Okay, can you see this little random thing? Okay, there is, this is why this is an unusual yarn. It's got these like weird fibers all through it. No, but that must be something. You it's, know no, it's I part asked, of, I think it's the linen. Because Noro, <laughs> kill me, the Noro yarn that I'm using for my chunkier sweater, my zipper sweater, yeah. has bits that are like, like that. Like this. But I swear it's like literal tan bark I'm pulling it's, out it of feels, there. It feels very... No, this um, is like, this is like more normal. I mean, that's still like quite, like it's very coarse. I like, can't, I don't know. as if I'm going to ever get you guys to, can we just like cover our faces and see if it's like, <laughs> it's not happening. No. Okay. Anyway, you can just see there's lots of like, I think it's the linen fibers. But see this bit, like how like woody that is. Yeah, yeah. That's literally what I'm pulling out of the Nori yarn. I feel like it's tan bark in there. But anyway, yeah. whatever. It's I still love the yarn. It's just random. Yeah. My little princess Aussie hands can't handle Be like, <laughs> <laughs> Um, So that's my main whip at the moment. 
Have you got any other whips? I don't, so please show us your whips. Um, my other whip is barely a whip, but it's kind of a segue into acquisition, sort of. <laughs> and this is my, uh, it's for my advent. I signed up for the scrappy advent run, run by the Cray Bayer. Um, who, bless her, like, she organised like hundreds and hundreds of people to swap scrappy advents. So I got a like... Oh my gosh, I'm so... I love an advent so much! <laughs> so I got a 12 skein advent, like a 12 skein mini advent from um, someone who lives in New South Wales and I sent her one, which was really fun. You need to get into this because I'm becoming tacky carding. <laughs> I can feel it. So I have like, yeah. um, so Wait, it's just been really on. fun. So you do a swap of your own scrap? Yeah. So, oh, that's even cool. So I, I wouldn't do that. It's okay. too late now, yeah, but next year. Next year. Um, so it's been really fun because I've been messaging being like, hope you enjoy your stuff. And I put a few extra things in, which was really fun. How cool would it be to do it with someone overseas and try each well, you, other's? You could have signed up. To, I said I just wanted to oh, swap with one. someone in Australia because I wasn't, I was a bit nervous about postage. The postage, look, international high postage yeah. is high risk and it's expensive, but. But cool. it would pay off in terms of the. The cool stuff that you get. The cool stuff that you get. And like the cool stuff, like imagine like how cool our scraps would be. That would, it would be exciting. Anyway, I've started making, I'm just, I've decided, she said she so sent me all, car. you want to what? I want to peek into it so far. Um, she sent me all sock yarns. Um, I've opened two. I've been very restrained. I don't know what, I've, I've never had an advent before. So I'm like, I haven't finished these ones. Should I wait until I finish these before I open more? I don't know. No. But these are the first two colors that she sent. Okay, there we go. Um, one is an alpaca sock yarn, which I love. Oh, this one's the alpaca sock yarn. Oh, um, you can tell. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, are you sure? <laughs> this is definitely alpaca. Um, and I'm just going to do stripey socks. Does she tell you what they are? Yeah, yeah, she has little labels. It's want, really cute. What's this? I want this. Um, that's the first one. That's Lang Yarns, uh, yarn. Javal, which is a great sock yarn. It's really, really hardy. It's really regular. Yeah. And they're really affordable colours as well for socks. Good staple here in Australia. Great. And then the second one is Lang Yarns Alpaca Socks. <gasps> this is, this, is this, no. I don't think it is. No, oh, no it's, it's not. not the same it's as not. Tweety, it, but I just saw socks spelled S O X X and I got excited. It's gorgeous. It, it's got like, um, it reminds me of, I mean, it's probably because Maya is also full alpaca yeah but even like the colors in it it's got lots yeah. of different shades of green in it which is really pretty so i have started barely <laughs> um and i've started two at a time socks oh proud of you how are you finding it? i dislike it i think oh, i'm gonna stop it. <laughs> i don't love it it's too comp it's too I it think doesn't it doesn't flow nicely it doesn't so I, as someone who has done it now yeah and compare initially i liked it because i liked the fact that like you had two of the exact same sock however i like the magic loop sock which i never was doing before but i yeah i I'm think not into it. it's it's at the cross join where the yarns can get a bit tangled it just re removes the portability yeah this is like as well yeah um so I think I'm going to put one on pause and just work on one at a time. Cool. Um, I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to knit a tube and then like I've done a provisional cast on, oh, hello, yeah. love of my life, provisional cast on. Um, and then I'm just going to knit a tube and then as long as it is, then I'll do so, toes an and then I'll do a true afterthought heel and I'll cut Ooh. into it. Have That's you done plan. afterthoughts before? Nope. <gasps> so, I'm excited. I've always wanted to do one, but I, you know, it just feels a bit intimidating. And also, I don't know how it works with like the, because people, do, like I normally do like a cool heel flap. Can you do, I don't know if you can. I don't think, I think you sacrifice like a good heel flap for the flexibility of choosing where you put your heel. Anyway, keen to see how it works out or how you do it. So yeah, I think I'm just going to do like five row stripes and um, make some socks. So, so that'll be fun. You know, I mean, the design is up to you. Are you winging it? No. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think you should make the stripes different widths. Okay. Because oh, that's fine. I mean, like, I, I want it to look scrappy. Like, it's a scrappy it's, sock. No, but otherwise, if you do, like, all even stripes, it's going to be very where's Wally. 
but they're all gonna be like lots of different colors no but that doesn't matter but like imagine how much cooler it would be if, if you had like more irregular yeah yeah and then like you yeah. could do like for instance you could make them a asymmetrical kind of cool but not super asymmetrical mm -hmm. so for instance your first two colors you could do like three rows and then like a row of green then like two, two, two rows and then like kind of blend them a little bit yeah yeah, yeah. oh um, yeah 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 you know, oh, I like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think that would be. I think I'm just like cooler. Overwhelmed at the prospect of the brain power required. No, but like you would just wing it. Yeah. You yeah. don't have to have any brain power for it, and particularly if you're doing it as a tube. That's like, true. Yeah. You can just have fun. That's true. So that's my other whip at the moment. Um, so thank you, Lucy, for your lovely advent. I don't know if she watches this. I don't know, but um, yeah. That's my other whip. I'm definitely gonna do it next year. Yeah, hopefully she runs it or again. Or maybe we could just like normalize doing it and not waiting till Christmas. Just swap sc scraps sometimes. Does anyone want to do a <laughs> January advent with me? <laughs> cool. Um, that's it. I'm out of whips. Okay, shall we go to acquisition? Yes. Are we ready? It's Christmas okay. time. It's Christmas time. Guys, let's just put it out there. She broke her yard back. <laughs> Okay, and uh, when it rains, it pours. So <laughs> it's like everything that I wanted, I have now started to get. Anyway, we'll just get into it. Should we start with, I'm gonna start with like a slightly less exciting one, which for me is still exciting. Um, so I saw lovely Sarah's jump her last video and as she was talking about it, you probably all heard in my voice, maybe I need a <laughs> nice gray. Al alpaca drapey everyday wear jumper. <laughs> so I bought the same thing because I do everything that Sarah does. So I just bought, it's, I mean, I'm not going to go into it heaps. It's just the alpaca, 100% um, alpaca my work from Morris and Sons. Um, love this yarn. Also, Sarah bought out Morris and Sons and Silver Fox. What? You bought, you bought out. Oh yeah, I bought all of it. Um, I bought it all. I, I cleared out their stuff. You more did, or less. but you didn't. So I was waiting because they had told us December we're doing a restock. December oh, yeah, we're doing yeah. a restock. That's, That's what Sarah was promised. Anyway, I it got to December first, and I was like, I cannot wait any longer. So I, I emailed them, and I was like, Hey, I'm not crazy. I just really love your yarn. Like, what? When is the restock planned? Because I needed like a little bit more of a specific time frame. And then they told me January, and my heart, my little heart broke. And I told them, look, like I really just want like the grey and silver fox, but it won't let me buy more than six bulls from your online store. Um, and uh, anyway, I said like I need like about twelve for my pro, like eleven to twelve for my project. And I emailed, and bless Maddie, her name's Maddie. I love Maddie. She put in so much effort. So I told her and she emailed me back like the next day and said, sorry for the late response. Um, excuse me. <laughs> anyway, and then she literally had She doesn't gone, know what a late like, response is. No. Like she should wait for anyone. But the commitment, me. like she emailed and got in touch with all their little stores. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and amongst their warehouse and their two small stores managed to like check and like how much stock there was and scrounge together all and of the remaining ones she that said, I hadn't bought yeah she said I can get hold of 12 I think I said I needed 11 she said I can get hold of 12 you're welcome to just take the 11 but there are 12 available if you want it of course, I, of course I took all 12 can you imagine if I just left one, one with the die lot like out there that would be so sad um and she said you know I'll I can get them sent to you um and they were doing 15% off at the time as well for That's Black Friday so yeah like the best and I literally said like oh my gosh yes please like how can I what's the best way of doing this she's like oh I'm in store today just like give me a ring and we'll like organize it over the phone and bless her not only had she like got it from all the stores which as someone who's worked in retail that is a nightmare because mm, you need to, to like, make sure all everything. of them have stock because yeah. if there are often stock discrepancies you also need everyone on the same page to like not sell any of them and then also coordinate them all going to the same place like it's really and also like for anyone who works in retail, you all know how annoying it is to like organize transfers and phone orders yeah, and yeah. just anything, anything can go wrong, yeah. you know? Anyway, she even was like, I've got, you know, this store that has the most to send it to you directly. And then you're going to get another parcel um, after we've like, 
you know, brought it all together so that you're not getting a million packages, but also because that's going to take longer. I want you to be able to start on your project. So that's why I'm getting you the one package sent first. And she was just so that's thoughtful about it. Um, and yeah, anyway, love her, love Morris and Sons. They're great. Um, and uh, and yeah. now you've got some alpaca in your life. I do. And I've already, um, I'm, I've already thought very what? deeply about what sweater patterns that I want. And honestly, I can't tell you the names because I looked at so many. <laughs> um, but maybe what I'll do is I'll put it in the description below. I won't make Sarah do the work. I'll even do the work myself. Um, but you guys know it's going to have a really cute shoulder. So this is where the <laughs> shoulder came from because Your I was like, I want a really nice staple pattern. Just basic jumper with a really nice cut for the shoulders. Yeah, yeah. And um, that's where I my shoulder obsession was born um so yeah good so that's the plan good great bye approve i'm very excited approve do you have any acquisitions you want to talk about nope just the it was just my advent i have young Laura acquisition here <laughs> so we we also did <laughs> an order um from knitting for olive so knitting for Olive, they if you're buying an order for them from the, the for the first time, they're doing free shipping internationally, which groundbreaking. Yeah, it's, it's a game changer. <laughs> game changer. So you know I've done the orders previously, so the order was done for Sarah, um, but I of course jumped into the order and Sarah. I haven't actually. I'm the order person. She okay, makes between it the two of us. She I mean, does not always. No, no, you're always the order person. Most of the time, I'm the order. You're person. making this stuff happen. Um, so Sarah put in her order to me, and I put the order in for her. Oh, I know. Okay, so oh my God. Uh, when you ordered this, I was like, Sarah, this is so niche. Like, why are we buying the color elderflower? But guys, I'm so, I, 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 it's I, the perfect, like, creamy lemon. I did not... Oh, okay, I didn't think it would be this good. It's beautiful. How about... I, I, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, guys. Oh. It's like... It's... I, and I don't know why... But it just looks even nicer than my previous one. Like, look at, I think it's the shape of them. Like, they're just, maybe it's because normally we're just stuffing it into a bag because we're ordering so much at a time True. and this is how it's meant to come. But they just, they're just. This was a real, almost, just, this was a spur of the moment purchase. This was random. Um, I and love it. I just spotted this color. I was like, oh, that looks kind of pretty. And it's a bit different to the other whites that you can't kind of get elsewhere. Cause like just buying whites, like there's other, there's other silk mohairs we could get here, but I was like, this one looks a little bit different. I'm obsessed with this. Color. Um, it's it's like it's a little bit yellow, but like barely. But in the but perfect, it's not. I like the like for me. I'm like bring out the. This yeah, reminds that's me why of I'm the so bag happy that I recently it. bought. Like yes. it's bringing out the like. It's quite. It's like a little bit citrusy. I think it's showing up more yellow on camera than it is in real life. It is a little bit more yellow on camera, but I'm living for it. Oh, I'm so wrapped. It's very, 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 very <laughs> pretty. I, was, oh, I told Sarah, I was you. like, I know it's not a, big, like, a new thing for you because you literally told me what you wanted. But no. I thought that you'd be overwhelmed by how beautiful it was because I was not expecting it to that be that I'm pretty. I'm so happy. Um, I had forgotten that I'd ordered this because you were like, oh, I have your yarn. And I was like, what yarn? What have I done? I've lost control um, and I'm not sorry. Um, I'm going to make, I bought this to make one of the garments, one of the tops from the Santa's Garden Mixed Till Dumb Soft for Women book. Is it the zipper one? No, no, no. I've bought it to make, it's, it's kind of similar to the ranunculus. It's okay. like just one strand of mohair and it's got like a oh, lace cool. yoke detail. I can't remember the name of it, but I'll put a picture up, but it's like kind of like the ranunculus, but not. And I'm going to make it in this beautiful it's gorgeous. lemony cream color. It's so pretty. I'm so happy. Oh my god, this was just like I can't Christmas. I can't here. guys, I can't do the thing where like we do a video, I look at what Sarah's got, I want it. <laughs> Next video I've got it too. Can't it goes do both that. ways. Um, it's very oh my pretty. god. So yes. Um what an acquisition. What a Great surprise acquisition. acquisition. Thank you. Um in what the did same you get? order. So Jacob bless. So you guys, you know the zipper sweater that I made him? It's gorgeous. He loves it. However, he wears a long t-shirt. Like he wears like normally long t-shirts. Yeah, he's a long. He's a long t-shirt. Like he wears oversized t-shirts as his jam. The problem is the sweater I've made him is like a normal fit sweater, and with the long t-shirt, it's a bit of a. It's it looks. Look. It makes it look cropped, but it's not cropped. 
Um, anyway, but of course he tells me this after I finished it, bound off, and now de-stashed that I had extra balls of that yarn. I bought it from overseas and I've de-stashed to someone in Melbourne who now is loving it. Yeah. And then he's like, oh, and then he's like, oh, I wish it was a bit longer. And I was like, I could have changed this. Like I could have done that anyway. So I ordered another <laughs> ball of that. So that's like less exciting. Um, but I mean, it's still nice. It's like the, if anyone was interested, I did see in the last video, it's in the color uh, slate gray and it's in heavy merino. So I got that. Um, and then, oh, so I think I told you guys in a previous video that I wanted to make the camisole number nine, which is just a basic, very like fine knit, like, but not gappy. What's the word? Like condensed? Uh, it's just a, it's like a, a knit cami mm. fitted. It's from um, my favorite things knitwear and it's gorgeous. And the yarn I was going to use was yarn that I already had, which was like a fingering weight yarn from the same brand that does Gilead. Dreher and Tira. That one. Yeah. Oh, I remember um, you held it up and you're like, this is what I'm thinking because I got a lot of these. Yes. Yeah. Um, it's like a, I ordered, when I ordered it, I ordered it on, I said ordered a lot, I ordered it <laughs> online, um, thinking I was going to get navy, but it definitely was giving more teal oh, and it wasn't right. dark enough for what I wanted for the project at the time. And then when I was vision, envisioning the singlet or the cami, um, again, I wanted navy, you, yeah. I wanted like a rich navy. So I bought oh some gosh. rich navy, it's the perfect navy. Like I couldn't get better. <laughs> This is the navy of my dreams. It's coming up so much darker on camera. It's a true dark French navy. And this is in the merino. Yeah, so this is a knitting for olive merino. Mm. I know that we've given them a hard time about their merino not being like the perfect merino for our standards, but honestly, it is the it's most- It's perfect for this. It's perfect for this. It's the most even merino. Like it's the most even thinner weight fingering yarn um the ones on her pattern like that she's used for her samples are in this yarn as well so i think it'll be perfect, perfect. and then just for a little zhuzh i haven't picked it up yet but i bought from make a maker the stellaris oh yep, yep yep it's so i don't know what the brand is called but it's yeah it's just called stellaris it's like a lurex sparkle yeah and it's thing. like a really thin thing that you hold with yeah it. so yeah. it's like lace weight maybe even thinner yeah. um so i bought that in like a it's like a fuchsia honestly it's the same it's the same <laughs> it's a recurring thing. thing yeah <laughs> um, it's like the gingham sweater that like pinky kind of color so it's like a fuchsia color yeah stellaris and i thought held together would be so cool to give like a slight mild effect with a bit of sparkle in it perfect um and a bit of like it'll be like a little bit structured it's giving the Chanel show from spring, summer this year, which it's just like the combination of the color I'm really excited about. If I have enough yarn and if I love it enough, I could even consider making a pair of matching shorts with little pockets. Stop and it. With like a little oh. bit more extra Stellaris on the trim. Yeah, and then I might cute. just die and go to yeah, heaven and my yeah. life is complete. <gasps> mm, I'm excited. Right. I am excited. Holy moly. Do you have more acquisitions? Nope. I have another acquisition. To be it's, fair, it's I, had, I had no choice for this one. Um, I think also you've been studying hard a lot and you deserve mm. nice things. Thank you. It's not heroin. <laughs> um, okay, so the, oh, you can just buy anything. The next one that I bought is more Nora yarn. And I was Guys, not oh just gosh. inspired, I just straight up copied. Who was it? Not sure, but I know I can picture the Instagram post that you sent me and I was like, this is Paige's destiny, this picture. It was my destiny. It looked like Tweety. It looked Tweety. No, I'm just stealing it, sorry. Okay. So anyway, this is a color. It's not really, oh, I feel like that one's showing up a little bit better. Yeah, it's the lighting. Um, anyway, it's the Noro Sock Yarn and Silk Garden Solo. So this is a sock version. The other version that I have is just the regular one. So it, that one's like, comes up to like an Aran weight. This one is supposed to be like a fingering weight, but I will note that like it comes up thicker. Like for instance, here it says 3.5 to 4 millimeter needles. So just to keep in mind, if you're getting it, it's like the yardage is of four ply and the weight is of four ply, but the actual gauge is like it's a chunky. thicker yarn. Anyway, you, is, are you meant to make socks with this? Is that the idea? 
I think so, but no one makes socks out of it. I swear, like, when you look at this yarn on Ravelry, everyone's making, making sweaters, balance, yeah. and specifically the Terrazzo sweater, <laughs> <laughs> petite knit. But anyway, the reason I was so inspired is it's got this pink base with a bit of rainbow in it, and then that mixed with, um, this person had mixed it with Knitting for Olive, uh, like the kid silk like their silky Marino, mohair, hair, yeah. um, in the color ballerina. So like a light pastel pink and together it was a yarn combination of my dreams and just... I just couldn't stop thinking about it. So I thought, you know, these finally, like this, this yarn can be quite difficult to get in stock in nice colors. This, I thought I'd just get my hands on it whilst I could. And then I also made an order from knitting for olive online, but that one is actually meant to be arriving today. So it'll be at the post office later today and I can't show you, but we'll put the pictures. It's exactly the same yarn combination and I'm obsessed and I'm going to make the cutest cardigan in the world out of it. And it's going to have little pockets cute. and it's going to be a bit structured and have a cute shoulder. And, and fun I, buttons. Exactly. I'm going to get really cute fun buttons. Um, and I know which pattern I'm going to use as well. It's called the Mouline cardigan and nice. I will put a link below and maybe um, Sarah might be able to put a picture in. If she yeah, I could probably me. squeeze it into my um, busy schedule. Yeah, and uh, the reason I chose it is because it's got a bit more structure. It's got a cute shoulder detail. Um, Very nice. Very nice. Yeah, that's a, that's the plan. Oh, I'm sorry. At one point you were like, oh, I don't know. Like I've already bought a lot of yarn recently. Oh, can I you should blame buy me? This. And I was like, this is the most important yarn you will ever buy because this is like the most paid yarn. You, it I've is ever the seen. most mean combination. And to, to be honest, I would have been so sad. Yeah, I'm so glad that you um, followed your heart. Also, like I know I have so much, but it doesn't go off. And like I literally Whatever. dive back into the stash all the time. And and it's paying off now because you have the flexibility to make what you want. I think I'm also it's a like, sign. I'm the kind of person who I like when I see this is terrible, like and just screams privilege, but when I see like something that I like when it's like clothing or yarn, mm -hmm. I don't usually buy like for a project. I buy it and then I Let like it percolate and I like find a project for it yeah. and like it's the yeah. same with yeah. outfits like if I see something that I like feel really good in I'll buy it and I don't buy it for a wedding I think like I get to the wedding and I have stuff already yeah, to wear totally. like I never really buy for events and stuff so I don't know it's like a weird justification but... no I rate it because I'm the opposite and then I get to the day before the wedding and I've got nothing to wear so yeah no, it's just uh yeah look it's definitely very consumptious whatever Anyway, I'm, I'm happy with my decisions. So. I'm happy with your decisions too. I think we've made great life choices today. I'm feeling good. Um, good, good, good. Okay, last thing is um, <laughs> we ticked over a thousand subscribers, which is wild. Guys, I'm. It's I'm nice like, because, like, I think we still do. Like, we're basically recording the conversations that we would have anyway. It's just now other people literally are eavesdropping in a conversation. I don't know. Like, it's, it's kind of irrelevant, but it's also kind of lovely. Um, so it's just, um, yeah, we just wanted to say thank you to so much to everyone who has subscribed and left lovely comments and tries to see me in the right way with my yarn choices and given like tips on like, cast. Oh. oh my gosh, I like, I've learned so much and like all these little tips and stuff have been so helpful. So as a thank you, which to everyone, we wanted to do a little giveaway to say thank you for all your lovely support um, since we started making videos. That is correct. So we will be doing our giveaway. Um, it'll be after this video obviously goes up. Um, I feel like timing wise, we should, I think we should announce the winner based on comments. Um, in our last video of the year, which will be our everything we knit in 2023. Yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, we, haven't, we haven't talked about this, but I'm just like springing this on I'm you. I'm a bit nervous because I also like feel like I haven't knit that much. But Whatever. anyway, it doesn't matter. But basically- In our last video of the year, we'll announce the winner. The thing that you can win is this. Sarah's got a brand new Navy project bag that she's knitted, uh, <laughs> that she's made. Um, it's gorgeous. So this is the one I made myself. I loved it. I had enough left over to make another one. Um, so if you would like to own this project bag plus a surprise ball of yarn. Um, there might be more than one. Um, some surprise yarn, something Australian and lovely, um, which will go in this bag. 
If you could pop in the comments below, um, maybe what you're working on at the moment. Um, the last time when we asked people like, what's your favorite yarn? I all of a sudden found all these yarns that I really want to own now. So yeah. um, that was uh, a dangerous comment section. Yes, it is. Um, if you want to, um, yeah, I, I would recommend having a troll through there. Cause yeah, it's, it's good. It's a, it's a, a, a treasure trove. That's the word I was looking for of beautiful yarn. And I'm really excited to go and like look into it once I've finished um, getting through some of this. <laughs> but I think, you know, we'll definitely be still using comments from that video, as I said earlier. Oh, yeah. So as well. So no we one's going to miss out. We're clearly novices in this giveaway thing. So I think we <laughs> signaled it a little bit early. But um, we'll take from both um, any comments about the yarns that you're loving or projects that you're working on at the moment. Um, you don't have to subscribe, but it would be nice if you did. Um, and we'll send this, we're going to send this anywhere because um, we'll send this worldwide. Don't know how much shipping's going to be, but it doesn't that's matter. a problem for another day. I was literally telling Sarah, you know what the most like frustrating thing is? Like being Australian, like no one wants to send stuff to us like yeah. for giveaways. Cause, and like, I don't blame you. It's like, it's expensive shipping, but like, whatever, like we... I mean, we're not, it's not just going to be open to Australia. And I think that makes it even more exciting, particularly for places that want to try some Australian yarn. Yeah. Um, so we will stay tuned. Um, we'll announce a winner in our next video. Um, but as always, thank you so much, everyone, for all your lovely comments and all your support. Um, it's been really lovely and it's been so much fun. Um, and thanks you. <laughs> like, Getting too sentimental. I know. No, honestly, like... Yeah, it's a it's a highlight. Like getting out of bed every morning, I'm like, eh. and then this morning, Jacob sees I'm like up and about, and he's like, you're seeing Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, um, thank you so much, everyone, and we'll see you soon. Thanks so much, guys. Bye. Can I get a tissue? Sorry. Okay. Sorry to be this person. What? No, this I'm is. I'm hazy for Well, no, this is a good opportunity for me to have a little. The fire that's getting a little, you know, sniffly. Well, this is a good opportunity for me to eat more mince pies. And you know, it's really funny. I didn't tell you this, but when, like, Jacob came this morning, he was like, What time Sarah coming? <laughs> and I was like, 7.30 and he was like, of course you get her to come at 7.30 when you know I have to leave at, like for work at 7.25 and I was like, mm, yes, this is on purpose. <laughs> that, was exactly, that was exactly the intent. This is by design. <laughs> mm. Mm. Okay. Um, oh, this is so nice. Okay, how good Sri Lankan tea? It's really, I mean, how good is sugar? <laughs> so you're going to say how good Sri Lanka? I was like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, how good is Sri Lanka tea?